the advantage this is going to sound weird but when I got my first lathe it was I traded it for a welder and uh, it was a little jet 1221 and it came with some really crappy tools and one good bowl gouge it was a Carter and Son half inch with the aluminum handle and everything but it had never whoop is that better okay well it had never been sharpened properly it had, the guy that had it had only done it with diamond, the diamond file cards, and it had more facets on it than an engagement ring. It was awful, right? So all, right away, I knew I, I had to figure out how to sharpen. So I, I had, all I had was an old six-inch grinder. So the first thing I did was I went, I went on Craigslist or something, and I found an eight-inch grinder, and I said, oh, I'll go buy that, 50 bucks. But it was high speed and it was stones, and it was really aggressive. I could not get a fine at all. So I said, all right, I, I turned around, I sold that eight inch grinder for 50 bucks, just like I paid for it, and I found this WEN grinder online for 90 bucks, and I said, that's my speed, that's my price. It came with some stones, and I, said, and I used those for a while, and then I finally said, all right, everybody raves about these CBN wheels, I'll bite the bullet. They're like 110 bucks a pop, but I bought them, and I'm, I'm not, I actually have three of them now. So the one that's here that I use most of the time is a 350 grit. Uh, when I'm doing square nose sharpening, this is 180 grit. I have another one at home that's a little bit coarser, so if I need to take off more material, I'll throw it on this side and you know do more removal. But pretty much everything I do for fine edge is on the 380 or whatever, 350, pardon me. Um, I also, of course, invested in a one-way system for holding the, um, I don't know what you call this long arm with the pocket on the end. And um, I made my own depth finder here for, um, for setting the depth if, when I go to use the Veragrind to sharpen my bowl gouges. Um, I have calibrated my system. So the, the gouge I use most of the time is this um, Carter and Sons 5 8 um, um, swept back gouge with a whole select handle. Um, so if I want to sharpen this one, and this is the tool I'm using probably 80%, 85, 90% of the time, and I want to be quick, I can do a sharpen in about a minute. So I can, I can stop the lathe, I come over to the, uh, my workstation for sharpening, I find my T-wrench, Pop that out, slide this in here. I do all of my bowl gouges at two inches, so I set it on the two inch point. Can you, you guys maybe see that? Yep. Set it on the two inch point, tighten that down. So now I'm all set for the very grind. The only thing I haven't done yet is the distance. I made a little stop block. I just slide this in and I lock it in place. And that is Pretty close, to, that should be spot on, yeah, that should be fine. So now I can go and sharpen this. Now, the cool thing about using something like this, it depends on the fact that the, these um, CBN wheels don't change diameter. So if you're using a stone and you're, you, you, you gotta true up the surface, it changes the diameter of the wheel a little bit, this isn't gonna work, right? So you're gonna have to adjust the depth here periodically. How do you do that? You've all learned the trick with the Sharpie, the color of the bevel, get it all nice and black. Am I doing that good for you guys? So I get this all nice and black, okay, with the Sharpie. Can you see that all right? Where am I? Where is it? There we go. There we go. Okay, so you can see I've colored the tip black, all right. Um, then you go over to your your uh, gauge here and you bring this in you line it up and then you give it a little spin and you look and I don't know if you can see that but it only touched the tip so it didn't the the, the bevel is not flush on the stone or on in this case the CBN 
So what that means is I got to come in a little bit more. And so you'd bring it in a little bit, give it a spin. And what you're looking for, I still haven't got it. But what you're going to looking for is a straight line with no black ink remaining. And then you'll know you've got the, uh, the angle right. And I went a little too far. That's probably right about right. And I bet if I give that a spin, and now you should be able to see a pretty uniform white line down the, down the bevel face. So I've, I've probably got it set right because I, I like my old method more there. OK, so now um, I have this set at the, 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 the first notch. I think that's 14 degrees. I, they, they tell you what the angles are, but I don't remember what they are. And then I start up my grinder. It's a slow speed grinder, so it takes a few seconds to get up to speed. I've got my tool in here. And I typically start at the middle. And I roll to the left. OK, that's not quite exactly on, but I'll, I'll hit it maybe twice. Depends on how close I've got the bevel. I'm off a little bit. I'm wondering if something didn't move when I, mo when I shipped, shipped my, my uh, basically what I'm looking for on the face. There we go. Is that this face will be completely clean. All, it'll all look the same, uniform, all one uh, shiny um, color. Whereas over here, you can see there's some brown and a little bit of black. And you know, I haven't done that side yet, right? And I also noticed that I didn't hit quite the top edge of the cutter. And that just could be because I rolled funny in, in the pocket. So I'll just hit it again. And I'm barely touching that. OK, so now I'm happy with that. That bevel is nice and clean. And then I'll go over and do the other side. And I got that one first try. So if you're a little bit wobbly or whatever, it can mess up. And now that piece is that sharp. If you drew your thumb across the top, and this is how I test, if I can feel a little bit of a burr, I know it's sharp. Um, and that's what you want, is a little bit of a burr on there. And you're ready to go. So I shut off this thing, put it back in the handle, tighten that down, pull it up, give it two twists with this wrench. And in less than a minute, I'm off turning again, all right? Uh, this, lay, this, this gouge is slightly different. I mean, the process is basically the same. The only difference is that I have a different block to get the angle right. It's, it's almost the same. It's, only, uh, it's off by like uh, an eighth of an inch. I use the same angle for this gouge, get it in two inches, pop it on. This is my bottom feeder. Some of you use these. This is great when you're doing a flat bottom bowl. Um, and then I just go th same exact process. Go over that way. That looks pretty good. And go that way. And then the other thing I might do because of the way this tool works, when you get down to the bottom, sometimes people like to knock the heel off of this tool. So you just have to slide your guide in a little bit. And I'm not very scientific about where I set that. And then when I do this, it's not touching the bevel, but I just, I just knocked the heel off of that tool. So it'll allow me to get around the corners down at the bottom of the bowl a little bit easier. And that's, that's it for the bowl gouges. You, with this 350 grind, you barely have to touch it. You just want that piece to shine. You're going to get a great edge. And the other thing you're going for is repeatability. You want to be able to do it the same way every time. So every time you come over here, you run that bevel. And you get the, uh, the same smooth surface. Um, I know that um, Greg has put pinholes in his slider, right? You're the one that, that, that's another way to index this, so it always goes to the same place. I've been using the blocks. That was, that, you know, th this is an old piece of hand railing that I s had hanging around the shop. And so that's all I have to do for the bowl gouges. Um, I do not, I mean, there are people that will do these freehand. I am not one of those people. Uh, anybody here a freehand bowl gouge sharp? Yeah? OK. All right. Well, maybe you guys could give us a demo. Do you use the 40-40 grind or freehand? Yeah. They, well, the 40-40, you have to do freehand, right? No? OK. Oh, OK. OK. All right. So yeah, and uh, 
pop this back in, tighten down the screw, get it to seat there, and then off to the races. My bowl gouges are done. All right. Okay, so now let's imagine that you want to do um, anything like a spindle gouge, a spindle roughing gouge, anything that just has one bevel on it, and it's, it's really simple. These are much easier. Um, the same technique with the, with the marker can come in handy. You, um, in fact, I use this because I, I don't have a fixed, I don't have one of these for any of my spindle gouges. Now the trick is to find the bevel that matches. And so the marker works great and you sort of eyeball it and then you give it a little spin and that's not working so let's go oh i'm not out far enough i can usually see the the light shining through to tell me that the bevel is off that's pretty close yep okay so now i don't know if you guys can see that on the camera but there's a nice white line right down the middle where it scraped off the ink okay start it up let it get to speed and then you're just going to do a, a, a real quick, and that's it. And you've got a nice shiny bevel on there, and you're done. Just barely touch it. Same thing, you run your thumb across this, you'll feel a nice little burr, and you know that piece is ready to cut. So that's it for anything with a bevel. So this is your spindle roughing gouge, any of the fingernail grind spin, uh, spindle tools you have. It's all, they're all going to sharpen the same way. Okay. Um, the trick is, again, finding the matching bevel. Now, the thing that I've taken to using a lot of lately are negative rake scrapers. How many here use negative rake scrapers? A lot of hands. Okay. I really have come to love these pieces. This started off as a square nose scraper. I, got, I bought a set of, of Sorby tools, and then I came across another set really cheap, so I bought it, right? So I have duplicates of a bunch of tools. Don't worry, I broke a bunch of them, so it's okay, right? No, but this was a square nose scraper, and I already had a square nose scraper, and not to mention the fact that I don't really like square blunt nose scrapers anymore. I just don't use them. So I converted this to a, a, um, a negative rake scraper. One of the things you'll notice is this angle is greater than 90 degrees, okay? And it comes to a point like that. Um, the hardest part about sharpening these things was always getting the angle right. Well, when you buy the one-way system, it always comes with one platform. But if you want to keep one platform stuck always at the right angle, you buy a second platform. And then I put the tape on it only as an indicator that don't mess with this, Mark. This one's fixed. This is for doing negative rake scrapers. You, so you pop this in, you know, get it close. and find the bottom of your piece and then this should line right up if I have it if it didn't move when I shipped it here tonight and if you have any doubts get your magic marker out color the bevel okay get it all nice and black and then you can come over here and you can spin the uh, spin the uh, piece and something's moved on me here so it's not exactly right um, area where I'm working so me, me, yeah I, I'm not sure the geometry changes dramatically based on the depth of this 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 platform I have not found that okay so for some reason this has changed somewhere I don't know if it moved on me it doesn't have to move much to um, to uh, you know, throwing it in the bin and putting it in the back of the car probably messed it up. But it's only off by a tiny bit. And then with this tool, I mean, you just get it up close and then a nice, a nice even. Yeah, it's definitely off, out of whack a little bit. And you just keep going until you get rid of all the marker. You can see that I'm, 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 it's a little bit low. But I'm thinking one, may, maybe two more passes. That's pretty close. I'll have to tweak, tweak it later. Not a big deal. But when you'll know it's sharp again. You'll feel that burr on top. You run your thumb across that, and you go, oh, that's good. I was watching a video by um, um, Stuart Batty 
a couple of weeks ago he was demo he was doing a demo for the Rocky Mountain Turners and uh, he said something really interesting that caught me uh, sort of surprised me he said first off he takes credit for introducing negative rake scrapers to the world um, maybe he did maybe he didn't I don't really care good for him right um, and then he said if anybody's using one of those carbide cutters that says it's a negative rake scraper that's baloney and I'm thinking about it, what does he mean because a real negative rake scraper has that little curl on the end that you can't see but you can feel and it's just like a cabinet scraper and so when you're turning you're using it like a cabinet scraper and you're just taking off really fine fine curls with it and as soon as that burr is gone you either have to go back to the grinder or if you've got a, a honing um, whatever they call those things yeah yeah then you can then you can burnish it back on right? and so I thought wow and it, I honestly once I had heard him talk about it that way I got better with the negative rig scraper just from listening to him describe it it's one of those things where I could have watched that video two years ago and it would have completely gone by me never even thought about it but my skills have advanced to the point now where I hear him talking about that it starts to click and go oh, you know light dawns on marble head and suddenly everything makes sense um, this was a square nose scraper with a hook on it for doing underside of lids um, and I was using it on resin once and I don't know if you've ever used a square nose scraper on resin but catches are awful and I said well maybe if I make it a negative rake it would be better and oh my god this little tool is amazing how often I use this little thing um, I don't there it doesn't really matter that it has a hook but it's got a pretty tight radius I've got the bevel cut so it's more than 90 and I sharpen it just like I sharpen all these other tools you know spin it on the uh, on against the stone as a negative rake there you go and so it's got a fairly short bevel on top but the angle is still pretty pretty uh, steep and um, it's a great little tool so that was a homemade guy um, I do not do skews so I can't really give you a, a good demo of a skew. I do have the device that sits on here that allows you to put the uh, skew off center and then wave it across the top of the stone. I've only used it once or twice um, because I probably only used my skew once or twice. Now maybe a little more than that. But the point is, I, I'm not sure I do a very good job on a skew, so I didn't bring that to do a demo of tonight. So, so yeah, so my hypothesis um, having that bevel on the top makes the scraper much less aggressive and so you don't get catches it it doesn't self feed yeah that's a good way to put it it doesn't self feed this so you, you I mean you really can't take a lot of material off with a negative rake scraper it's a very delicate it's meant for very like inside of bowls it's always hard to get rid of end grain tear out inside of bowls it's a pain in the butt right and if you try to sand it out you'll be there forever right particularly if it's a hardwood right everybody that does you know beautiful bowls knows that a negative rake scraper is the way you can go at end grain just take your time very light cuts and it'll cut instead of scraping because scraping is what tears out the end grain and gives you all those pock marks inside the bowl but if you're cutting which is effectively what you're doing because you've got that little curl on the end of the scraper and that cuts the wood instead of pulls at it and then you get rid of your po pock marks inside the bowl turns out you can do the same thing on an outside of a bowl right if you have pock marks because of end grain then you switch over to a, a negative rake scraper or a lot of us like to do um, the uh, shear scraping where you turn the turn the bowl gouge this way and and almost have the cutter almost the same plane of the rotation it's tilted a little bit and you, you and those of us that have practiced with that get beautifully fine dust almost kind of shavings but it smooths out the bowl and it doesn't tear out the end grain so it's the same idea just a slightly different tool a slightly different approach Th this this tool I'll be able to sharpen 50 times on the bottom bevel before I'll have to do anything on the top this one has a very short top bevel so yeah I'll have to do this one more often so where did I get the angle from I bought I have a Carter and son um, negative rake it's the left curve one right beautiful tool oh my god it weighs a ton it's just just really rock steady because it's so heavy I copied that angle for my other two negative rake scrapers so I didn't get experimental at all I just went with a known 
setting that uh, came with my Carter and Son tool. I, it's just a, it, it's just a scraper, really. Yeah, and this used to be just a scraper until I put the double bevel on it. It had a it was about a 14 degree bevel on the on the bottom, and then I decided to change the tool. And the same thing with this one. It was just a plain you know 14 degree bevel on the front, and I changed the tool and. Uh, Yeah, there you go. Okay, though this is this is a good example. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. So you see the difference. And if you want to come up afterwards, get a closer look. That's fine too. Where'd this come from? Oh, that's one of your tools. Here, catch. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, that's all I got. Uh, any questions that I haven't answered, or that maybe someone else can answer better than me? Going once, going twice. All right. Thank you, guys.